When you christen a book series with a name like the King Killer Chronicle, you will inevitably face a few questions from your readers, the most prominent of which are a matter of identity. Who is the King Killer? And who was the king that was purportedly killed? While we are swiftly graced with an answer to the first question, we are still left waiting for the second. People have thoroughly debated the identity of the king our protagonist Quoth is credited with slaying, with some fans going as far as to point to his friend Sim becoming the monarch, given his noble-born status. While I see a measure of credibility in such theories, I gravitate more towards the idea of Quoth's rival Ambrose being the king, or at least having close ties to the slain sovereign. Why? Because in both The Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear, we have spent a great deal of time developing the bitter rivalry between these two characters. Although the Chandrians serve as primary antagonists, their role for the most part has been confined to the background, whereas Ambrose Jackis is Quoth's enemy front and centre. As the firstborn son of a powerful and wealthy baron from Vintus, Ambrose stems from nobility, a sharp contrast to our nomadic hero's humble beginnings. This difference in social class is important, because it forms much of the basis for their conflict. For Ambrose, Quoth is a mere commoner, who he views as beneath him. Quoth encounters many difficulties because of his poverty and low birth, and many people at the university, especially Ambrose, judge him for it. On the other hand, Ambrose is the quintessence of the selfish aristocrat Quoth despises, a perfect little brat who looks down on the rest of the world. Things that come easy to Ambrose, such as wealth and social status, are a struggle for Quoth. They are near polar opposites of each other, both in their respective upbringings and their attitudes towards life. Their antagonistic relationship is triggered right from when they first meet at the university, where Ambrose refuses to let Quoth into the archives. Later, Quoth returns to see Ambrose harassing Fella, to which Quoth calls him out on his behaviour. In an act of spite, Ambrose tricks Quoth into entering the stacks with an open flame, which results in Quoth's dismissal from the archives. This series of events leads to an ongoing clash of wits and wills. During a show at the Aeolian, Ambrose channels his sympathy to break Quoth's loot string, and uses his influence and money to prevent Quoth from finding a patron to sponsor his musical endeavours. In response, Quoth writes a catchy song called Jackass, as a parody of Ambrose's surname, meant to humiliate the noble, which spreads through the university like a fire in a field. Their determination to one-up each other comes down to a matter of pride for both men. This is rather straightforward in terms of Ambrose, who believes himself to be better than everyone else simply because of his noble roots. It's a different story for Quoth, who refuses to be pushed around by a pompous bully after all he's been through as a beggar on the streets of Tarbien. It seems a foregone conclusion that their conflict will reach a head in Book 3, which could well result in either one dying at the hands of the other. Their rivalry has led to some pretty significant scenes thus far, most notably Quoth's first utterance of the name of the wind, after Ambrose steals and breaks his loot. Therefore, I think it's safe to assume that we are in for one or two major scenes with Ambrose to come. It's artistically and emotionally satisfying if Ambrose does turn out to be the king Quoth is responsible for killing. It makes everything that's happened between them relevant to the whole thrust of the plot. What starts off as a squabble between students may just bring the whole world crumbling down. Their ongoing rivalry pulls the trilogy together in a way that is needed. There are of course more compelling reasons for Ambrose being the king. Early in the wise man's fear, Will, Sim and Quoth are having a conversation about Ambrose and Sim makes a passing comment that the Jackis family is 12th in line for the Ventic throne. Indeed, there is a solid theory that there is a plot to crown the Jackis family while removing all remaining members preceding them in the line of succession. Ambrose's father 
the Baron Jackus' estates are referred to as the Pirate Isles, and it seems an entire family before them in the Ascendancy have been eliminated as a result of piracy. The fact that the Jackus family's proximity to the throne is rather overtly announced, and given that they're now that much closer to the crown, is highly suspicious. Devi also points out the Jackus family's ties to piracy, which hints that perhaps the sinking of Koth's ship on the way to Severin may have been perpetrated by Ambrose, since he was the first one to know about it, and was seen boasting to everyone about Koth's apparent death. This raises further questions like who was behind Cordicus, the alchemist hired to assassinate the mayor. While there is no doubt Cordicus was poisoning the mayor, we are not given an explanation as to his reasons for doing so. However, from the small interactions we get between Cordicus and Quoth, we can speculate that he was hired by Baron Jackus. The mayor is higher up in the line of succession than the Jackus family, and Cordicus did mention that he had been spending time with the Baron, who he describes as somewhat eccentric. This small clue we're handed regarding the Baron's personality implies that he might be quite mad, and determined to claim the throne for himself by taking out his rivals. Therefore, the King Quoth kills could just as easily be Ambrose's father, which would end up putting Ambrose on the throne in the present day timeline. This would explain the huge bounty on Quoth's head, as well as why he's hiding out in a small village in the middle of nowhere. But we mustn't overlook another important detail. Quoth's sword, Sisura, is nicknamed Poet Killer. Killing a poet would not gain Quoth much notoriety. However, killing a king who was also a poet would certainly turn heads. Who do we know that is a poet with the potential of becoming a king? Ambrose Jackus. Mind your tongue, Illyr. The day I come to you for help with poetry is the day... Is the day you have two hours to spare, I said. Two long hours, and that's just for getting started. Although a really bad poet, Ambrose still falls into this category. So there is a good chance that the king and poet Quoth is credited with killing are one and the same. And to top it all off, it looks like it will happen in Imre, a town which Quoth and Ambrose frequent often. We have never heard of a king of the Commonwealth or seen any monarch visit Imre, but the location the person was killed at is near a fountain in Imre, sort of like near the fountain where Quoth's loot was dropped by Ambrose. Coincidence? <laughs> With Patrick Rothfuss, there are no coincidences. Unless, of course, this is all a red herring, in which case, well played, Pat. Well played. The final theory I like to discuss, and one I think carries a lot of weight, was posted on Reddit which points out that there is a correlation between the butterflies the cafe is killing and the line of succession in Vintus. During this chilling scene, the monster in the tree is slaying butterflies indiscriminately, or so we are led to believe. The first butterfly to die is red and gold, which may represent the current king of Vintus, whose royal colours are, you guessed it, red and gold. As the scene goes by, more butterflies fall, including one that is sapphire, which as it so happens are the mayor's colours. If we carefully count each butterfly's death during the chapter, 11 go down in total. Baron Jackus is the 12th in line to the throne, when Will, Sim and Quoth are talking about the succession, which makes Ambrose just behind his father at number 13. However, Upon Quoth's return to the mayor's estate, Breden fills Quoth in on the court gossip, informing him of a duel that left the heir to the Fintish throne dead. Ambrose then is in fact 12th in line. When you add it all up, it leads to a riveting conclusion. Eleven successors and would-be kings are destined to fall, leaving Ambrose as sovereign over the realm. Whatever the case may be, I think we can all agree Ambrose has a very important role to play in the future. We know this because any time Ambrose is mentioned, Quoth reflects on what a fool he was to think him harmless. The books are foreshadowing some terrible destructive thing that will come about because of Ambrose, 
and whether he ends up as king or not, I can't wait to see what will happen. I'd love to hear your thoughts and theories regarding the king. Do you think it's Ambrose, his father, or someone else? Comment down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.